has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. And we are back, hour number two, for El Coast to Coast here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio, Carver High in for Scotty. Great to have everybody with us here today. Of course, it is the first big college football weekend, and we are ready every Friday on C to C. It is great to have, of course, Coach Terry Bowden uh, with us here on Coast to Coast. Twenty-eight years as the head coach, Auburn, Akron, UL Monroe, former national coach of the year at Auburn. Are you kidding me, Coach? It's great to have you. As always, my man, happy Friday. I mean, this is the first big Friday, Coach. We got to be pumped up here this weekend. Mike, you got it. What a great weekend this is. There's football every single day. College football takes over. We love it. Uh, Before I get to this weekend slate, I want to ask you one thing about last night uh, because Colorado uh, clearly has gotten a lot of attention the last year and a half because of Dion. obviously. They were 4-8 and last year. Uh, I get Dion getting a lot of attention, Coach, but watching that game last night, Travis Hunter uh, is a guy who's going to get a ton of attention. When you, he had three touchdowns. Two of them were highlight reel catches. He had seven catches, a buck 30, three tutties. And, Coach, he also played 40-plus snaps on D as a defensive back. Uh, now, that's impressive stuff that you know the NFL's already looking at, Coach. I mean, Dion breaks all the rules. You know, they stop letting players play offense and defense because they they'll, 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 they won't rest their legs. They'll get too many snaps. They do play counts. Dion did the same thing when he played for my dad. He played defensive back. He re- was a receiver. He went to the track team, ran track. He went to the baseball team. Dion believes the best player needs to play as much as he can. 129 snaps for Travis Hunter is so impressive, and it puts a lot of people to shame who says that they can't play 50 or 60 snaps. Uh, and he keeps that going all year, Coach. Like, that's a kid that – and last year there was talk there, and he unfortunately got hurt in that Colorado State game. He took the cheap shot, uh, and he was out for a good portion of the season. He's doing this stuff every week. He's going to be in that conversation when we talk Heisman uh, at the end of the year. I mean, already last night his odds moved up from, like, 30 to 12 or 15 to 1. So people are going to take a lot of notice of Travis Hunter for that award. Well, the good thing is he also plays offense because it seems like every year it's the offense. Yeah. The, <laughs> yes. the fact that he can play both ways and play to that high, high level, and then it, it would not be done if Dion wasn't the coach. Most other coaches, including myself probably, would have said, no, I can't play a guy that many snaps. But Dion would say, hey, I did it. You can do it. Coach, let's get to some of these games coming up uh, this weekend. Let's start with Clemson and Georgia. I- I'm always a fan, Coach. When these big programs – schedule other big programs in other conferences to start the year. I love it. I don't want to see you playing New Hampshire or any of these other teams week one. I love heavy hitter football the first game, and that's what you get, Coach, with Clemson and Georgia. Well, and I hope we continue to have it with the large conferences. I'm not sure teams are going to continue to do that. This is a great game. Clemson really against Georgia. Georgia is the is the team Clemson was about six years ago. They've got a great quarterback that can lead the team, NFL prospect, Great defense, great offensive line, and a running attack, and they are so strong. There's only one team, Ohio State, that has the talent level that Georgia does, and it's just Clemson, without the portal, without that side of the ball, it's going to be hard for them to keep up. I think Clemson will keep it close, and I keep, Clemson will be ready for this game. They'll be ready. Uh, you know, they played a, a tight, low-scoring game a couple years ago in Charlotte, Coach, uh, and now they swing it and they move it over into Georgia. I always, you know, they call these neutral site games and Georgia's playing in Atlanta. Coach, that ain't a neutral site game. Uh, I don't care how close Clemson is in South Carolina. That is a Georgia home game, Coach. You know it. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be red and black, I'm sure, and most of the, both of the stands will be red and black. But, but Clemson needs to, you know, it's going to be a low-scoring game, I think, because I think both teams are going to run the football, going to try to control the line of scrimmage. I think Clemson's going to want to try to run it to take the pressure off Klubnik. I think Georgia wants to run it all the time. They've got ATN who does a great job. They've got a great offensive line. So I think they're going to, I think it stays close at halftime. The only way Clemson has a chance, uh, and I don't, I don't, I think they'll beat the line. I just don't think they'll win the game is to keep that game close at half and keep their confidence up. Cause all they've heard about is Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. 
Uh, we've got two coaches going in on the hot seat on big programs this Saturday. Mario Cristobal at Miami, into Gainesville, Billy Napier, and Florida. One fan base coach is already going to be looking to run their guy out of town if they lose this one. Yeah, they're both on the hot seat, but Billy Napier probably more so because they have not had hardly any success under him. And they a lot of play, uh, fans will be hoping he loses so they can make a change. And he needs this game. He needs an early victory to have a chance. Not only does he need an early victory because the last five games of the season are unreal, he needs to have a great first half to make sure he's still in this game. Because you got to wonder, with all the criticism, how much confidence does Florida really have? They're going to come out fired up. But they've heard so much how they're not where they used to be, and fans have not been reluctant to tell people they may be going for another coach. So they need to play real well coming out the stretch. Uh, big game opener for Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame as they go to Kyle Field in Texas A&M. You know, this is the third year for Freeman, Coach, in South Bend uh, with the expanded playoff this year going to 12. I'm a Notre Dame fan. I say all the time, he needs to make the playoff this year. Uh, after what I feel was a couple of subpar first two years. Yeah, I mean, I think he can make the playoff. He's number nine, I think, in the country. He's top ten, but he's an underdog versus Texas A&M. And going into College Station, and Jimbo left uh, Mike Elko talent. He left him a lot of talent. And Mike Elko did an incredible job of turning that program around at Duke. I think he'll immediately change the A&M program around. And it's going to be a great game now, and it's going to be a close game. But I don't. I, Notre Dame's offensive line is young and untested, and I think the difference with the strength of Texas A&M's defensive line against a very young, inexperienced offensive line for Notre Dame. Unfortunately, Coach, I think I agree with you uh, that that on that side of the ball is where things are going to be a problem uh, for that young Irish O line. Uh, Penn State and James Franklin. I kind of put them in the same category as Marcus Freeman, right, Coach? Now that it's gone to twelve. He's got to finally get Penn State uh, in the college football playoff. But this is the kind of game he likes to flex his muscles, Coach. Early in the year against a team that he's probably a little bit better than, I could see Penn State uh, giving the business to West Virginia tomorrow. Yeah, and I'm really I'm really up on at West Virginia as kind of a sleeper. Of course, I am a Mountaineer. I did go to West Virginia. Yes, but we've that's had true. <laughs> and I think, I think uh, West Virginia will have an outstanding season and will get to a bowl game. But I don't think having a great season – is beating Penn State. Penn State is pretty is a great solid team. They've got a little better talent and West Virginia will play them great at home. And this was a nasty this was a nasty robbery through the years when I was playing there, my dad was coaching at West Virginia, but Penn State seems to always have a little more talent than West Virginia. And and coach, you know, let me ask you this. Like there were some kids on West Virginia who, who were on that team last year that talked about Franklin kind of rubbing it in, throwing an extra touchdown on at the end of that game last year. You've been involved in heated rivalries before. Does that stuff get remembered the next year? And are some of the kids on West Virginia going to be thinking about that? Well, I mean, anything you can do to motivate your players. I remember my, my dad running a score up on Lou Holtz when he was at William Mary, and, and Lou Holtz said he didn't appreciate it. And my dad said, Lou, it's your job to hold the score down, not mine. And he, they, they were good friends, and he was kidding. But, again, I don't think that's going to make a factor in how well they play at West Virginia. Again, you got to look at the history. West Virginia does need a reason to get up to play Penn State. It's always been a big brother type of program that looked down at West Virginia, these Mountaineers, these Hillbillies, and we take them serious uh, when we play Penn State. Uh, LSU the last couple of years, Coach, high-profile first games against Florida State, lost both of them. Now they go to Vegas to play USC, who wanted to get out of this game. How about Brian Kelly and the Tigers on Sunday night? I like him. I like him to cover the spread. I like him to win the game. And I just like the head coach. He is a great defensive coordinator. Now, both teams hired defensive coordinators that are pretty dang good. But Elko proved what he could do at Duke by taking that average talent and having the lead scoring team in the conference at Duke. And now he's going against another Dame team where the quarterback was at Duke. He knows the book on that quarterback. He knows his strengths and his weaknesses. I think this is a game that Texas A&M is going to be hot, 110,000 people. And I think it's going to be close and a lot of fun but I think Texas a and is going to start their season out on a good note. I got like 10 seconds, Coach. Does Florida State bounce back against BC Monday night after a tough loss in Dublin? They will. They were, they were embarrassed, and they'll bounce back. I think they'll even beat the line. I think they'll beat them by a good bit. because they, they got to keep it wide open because they were too conservative in the last game. Coach, Coach Terry Bowden is on Coach and Coach. We'll see you next week, Coach.
Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR distance zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth in there. Francis Tiafoe, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. And we are back for El Coast to Coast on a Friday, big college football Friday on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Carver High and Joe Ranieri in for Scotty on the grid. Great to have everybody with us here today. Uh, all right, Joe, uh, I ain't done. We keep rolling through this. Uh, nice job by Coach Bowden there, uh, getting us ready for the weekend. Now, uh, Joe, I want to hear from you on a couple of these uh, big games mm. uh, that we're going to have. Why don't we start? Uh, and as I was just saying to Coach, I love when we get uh, two heavies from outside conferences playing each other uh, early in the season, Joe. I think it's so much – I know that all these teams love the New Hampshire's and the Delaware States, and they want to go and beat up on all these teams. But when you get best on best, it's better for us, and I think it's better for them. Kirby Smart, the head coach of Georgia, of course, uh, this is the second time in three years he's playing Clemson uh, in the opening game. Why does he do these, Joe? Exactly for what I just said. Uh, Iron sharpens iron, as they always say. Strength of schedule. I mean, get to play a quality opponent right off the, the get go. And when you get into conference play, you're battle tested, probably better than a team that maybe doesn't play that kind of matchup. Find out more about your team. Um, it's great for the, the fans. You know, that's the advantage. Great for recruiting. Exposure. It's great for recruiting. It's great for the fans, Joe. Uh, and it is great for us. Uh, Low scoring game a couple years ago. Let's be fair. Clemson couldn't move the ball uh, for anything mm-hmm. against Georgia in that game. Obviously, a couple different teams this time around, and a heavy number here. Uh, in fact, down to twelve and a half now. Joe been floating at thirteen and a half uh, right in that area. So mm-hmm. down to forty eight and a half uh, for the total. What are you looking for here? Noon East kick in what they label as a neutral site game. But as me and you both know, Joe, and as Coach just said, too, that is not a neutral site game. That is a Georgia home game. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. Clemson fans travel. It's not that far, yes. uh, you know, down I-95 there in order to be able to get to the Mercedes Dome. But, uh, listen, you schedule these games five years ago because back then strength of schedule mattered. And your out-of-conference schedule mattered. Uh, and if you are ever going to lose a game, you probably want to lose the first game uh, if you're battling and trying to make uh, the postseason. Uh, but Georgia is number one, has been rated number one, and it should be uh, the returners. They have uh, Carson Beck, a Heisman hopeful quarterback there that everyone is talking about in that market. Uh, Trevor Etienne 
is the running back that they got from Florida, right? Unfortunately, he's facing a suspension because of the DUI he got back in March. The backup quarterback, Roderick Robinson, he had turf toe. He had some surgery. They're not sure if he's going to be there. So there are some questions about the running game of Georgia right now. But I'll tell you, Clemson's defense has not been good the last two years, at least not up to Clemson standards. And they only got four starters coming back this year on that side of the ball. I'm not sold on Cade Klubnik at all, but I'll tell you what, uh, there are some uh, questions about whether or not Dabo is letting Garrett Riley run the offense like he wants to. Since 2017 is 40 and 16 against the number when they're not laying three touchdowns or more. This is exactly the kind of game in exactly the price range where Georgia comes out and steamrolls these teams and shows exactly why it is their number one. I have no doubt they're going to do the same thing here. They were, yep. You know, we did all these stories. They were the one team who, like, didn't do anything. They didn't use the transfer portal at all. They didn't bring in other talent. They're just – I mean, it, it sounds like a lot of the same for me with Clemson yep. and now you're not facing Duke uh, tomorrow you're facing Georgia uh in Atlanta that that sounds like an yep. issue for me I'm with you I think we lay it uh here with the Bulldogs under two touchdowns yep. with Kirby uh usually a very very good way to make a living uh next Huge. let's talk about this one uh Penn State in West Virginia me and you had some laughs uh about this yesterday uh and we'll t and we'll start with James Franklin who of course uh, James Franklin always covers these games, Joe. Uh, it always covers these games. They are going to open up in Morgantown. It is seven and a half. It's actually moved to uh, right now with 50 and a half being the total. Last year, uh, you had that game ending uh, touchdown that they stuck on at the end to cover in Happy mm -hmm. Valley. We've heard some of the West Virginia kids talk about that. Uh, maybe that's still in the back of their minds a little bit. Are you backing West Virginia at all here, Joe, tomorrow afternoon? Uh, West Virginia at double digits was a great get, uh, but now we're starting to see the money continue to roll in. And the ironic part is it's not the public backing West Virginia. Uh, the public is all over uh, Penn State, yes. and this line is going the other way. So the, the Sharps, the pros, love this spot here for uh, West Virginia. And, yeah, I, at 10, I really did like it. I can't think of two guys – Two coaches I trust less, uh, but there's a lot of guys on this West Virginia team that remember that, that are back on his team. Tough place to play. Penn State should win it, but they're not going to win it in in epic fashion like, uh, like Penn State fans think he will. They'll win it, but it wouldn't shock me if it's last minute. Penn State's won 24 straight games under Franklin when they're favored by at least a touchdown, and they're 19 4 mm -hmm. 1 against the number in those games they usually flex here oh joe what i love to see uh West me too <laughs> we're back coast to coast right after this Gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsCrit.
Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. And we are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Friday. Carver High and Joe Ranieri in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us here today. All right, Joe, let's go to the next one, which is another uh, one on the heavy hitter club for Saturday. Uh, and that is in Gainesville between the Canes and the Gators. Uh, I know one thing. One fan base will already be looking to tear down their head coach uh, after this one uh, because they already want to tear both of them down. You lose the first game uh, to the in-state rival, it's going to be even more. Billy Napier, probably like Coach said before, a little bit more on the hot seat than Mario Big Chest Cristobal, but uh, he he has the swamp behind him, and he thinks that will be an advantage. Yeah, I think it's – look, I mean, Gator Nation is going to be on full display Saturday. Um, <laughs> you bet. And look, we're, so. we're not, not taking on this food. challenge just as a team. We're going to have 93,000 of our dearest friends out there, right? So um, it's critical. You know, we talk about as a football team, we want to create a nightmare for the opponent. You know, this is one of the most iconic venues in all of sport, and I would anticipate it'll be pretty special in there Saturday. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, we'll see, uh, you better hope it is, uh, with Graham Mertz, uh, back there for you. Uh, Joe, where do you stand here, uh, on the battle in Gainesville between the Canes and the Gators? Uh, big game, uh, for both head coaches. They need it bad. So there is the only thing more fun than the delusional University of Miami fans before the season starts with the U is back, baby. The U, we're back. Is uh, Florida Gator fans uh, delusional that every year they're going to win a national championship? So one of these fan bases is going to be absolutely must-watch television here. Uh, The reality is, listen, you know the University of Miami has not hit their season win total since 2017? Uh, And it's not for a lack of talent, uh, Carver. Every year, they play worse than the talent level they have in this roster. But as it turns out, they actually have (laughs) one of the best rosters they've had in a long time here with Cameron Ward coming over, Restrepo at wide receiver back, Jacoby Brown back. Also, they brought in Damian Martinez from Oregon State. The defense returns a lot of starters. This is a much improved university miami team the problem is the gators are actually going to be better defensively than they were a year ago remember how bad they were they were absolutely horrific last year and they couldn't stop they couldn't stop anybody last year to me i don't want anything to do with a side i do think though that both of these defenses are going to be ahead of the offenses here i do think in the swamp This has got an under written all over it. I don't trust Graham Mertz and Cam Ward turned the ball over far too many times at Washington State for me. Given both of these coaches, I think both of them will be a little more conservative than usual. I think the under is the way to go in this one. 
Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I think that there's too much at stake, and I know it's the first game, and you probably don't think mm-hmm. that. I think there's too much at stake for both of these guys in this first yep. game that they ain't going to be doing – there's no fast and loose in this game, Joe. I, I just don't see nope. fast and loose. And the one thing that maybe tips the scales for me on the Miami side is Cam Ward is very good. Uh, that was a great yep. get for them. He was very good in Washington State the past couple of years. But there's one thing you also got to worry about, Joe. Everyone's on Miami this week. And I mean, everyone yeah. is on Miami this week. And so much so, Joe, that, like, it ain't moving. Like, it's been two and a half for a little while now. And every book I see put it out, 79% on Miami, 82%, 77%. Everybody, yep. uh, public-wise, is running the window with the Canes. And that always says to me, Joe, Thanks, but no thanks. I think I'll just join you in the under pile. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't. And I'll, I'll say this. I think Grant Mertz is going to be worse without Pearsall, who got drafted mm. last year, who was his yeah. number one receiver. I don't see them. He's not going to be as good. He made him look really good, Ricky Pearsall, last year. I don't see that happening this year. And I think uh, the defense is this is what that game's going to be all about. So the under to me, I think 24-21, somewhere in that ballpark is what we're looking at. Yeah, m- mid-50s is heavy uh, for what we could potentially yep. get uh, in this yep. game. All right, Joe, we'll come back. We got more for you, including a big year for Marcus Freeman in South Bend uh, begins in Texas A&M against the Jaguars and Mike Elko. We'll talk about that when we come back coast to coast right after this. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR distance zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth in there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Here on a Friday, Carver High and Joe Ranieri in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us here today. We are going through all of this weekend's big college football games because it is the first big weekend of college football for us, and we are very excited uh, to get that going. Let's go next, Joe, uh, to this Notre Dame-Texas A&M game. Of course, the Irish 
heading south uh, to Kyle Field, the 12th man, 106,000, blah, 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 blah. A very important year for Marcus Freeman, his third year in South Bend, where I have said it's playoffs or bust for me. I would chop him if he can't make it uh, with 12 teams in the playoff this year. Here he is talking about his team being ready to go down into such a hostile environment like Kyle Field. Well, I think you're confident um, that you have a team uh, that – can do that. We've trained that. Uh, we've trained um, really being able to execute your assignment in crazy um, conditions with, with crowd noise and, and, you know, trying to do surprise situations in practice. Uh, but at the end of the day, they got to do it when it matters, right? And, and you can do it in practice. Um, that builds confidence within yourself and with your coaching staff and um, but you got to do it when it matters versus an opponent. And we won't know that answer until we get to Saturday. Uh, Joe, I, I know that it sounds like I'm, I'm joking around or, or whatever it is uh, that I'm going to do. But uh, and I am a Notre Dame fan, so it sounds like I'm, being, I'm poo-pooing it a little bit. I, I don't get the uh, this is such a hostile, dangerous uh, place to play, uh, Texas a and I'm not. I just don't see that, uh, honestly. They're like, their SEC home winning percentage, Joe, since they joined that conference is 525. Uh, you know, they're not, they're, <laughs> Joe, it's not like they haven't lost the game at home in 12 years. Uh, Texas A&M, I think sometimes these things get a little overrated, but that still doesn't mean I don't think Notre Dame could go down there and lose, Joe, because they could. No, it's, I mean, listen, there's obviously a renewed energy there. College Station's a great college town. When they're winning, it is a big-time advantage there. But usually, and you know how this is, Carver, the first games of the seasons for teams at home uh, against quality opponents, you're always going to get more juice for it. So home field matters, especially in game one in a spot like this. I would say the same thing, listen, if they were going to Notre Dame, Big advantage to Notre Dame at home over a Texas A&M team. But ultimately, I think this comes down to the two quarterbacks, does it not? Uh, who knows Riley better than Mike Elko? And on the flip side, I think the advantage for the Aggies is having Connor uh, Wegman back at quarterback. Uh, and I, he's got a great group of receivers. We already know they're going to be able to run the ball um the offensive line they've got a bunch of returning starters there the defense for texas a&m has always been good mike elko is a defensive guy so this is really going to come down to me is which quarterback and which coach do i trust more is there an edge for elko to plan against the quarterback that he recruited that he knows or does it not matter because Notre Dame is that much more talented uh, over them? Uh, I, I don't know. I think the defenses are going to rule the day in this game, so this is another under for me. Uh, but I do think it could be a coin flip, but I, I think there's an advantage here for Elko game planning as a defensive-minded head coach against his former QB. I think it makes a, it, it's a huge thing. And I think it is going to factor yeah. into it. We've seen this line obviously swing uh, to where now Texas A&M is the favorite at home uh, with the two and a half. Uh, you think, what about the total, Joe? I mean, 46 and a it's half. not no, a shootout. I, I don't believe so either. You look at the games Notre Dame played last year against the more superior yep. competition. You think about that Ohio State game. You think about... You know, those games uh, were 2017, 23, 20, you know, those were low-scoring games that Notre Dame played. Um, look, they can afford to lose this game now, Joe, with the way the it's structured yes. with 12 teams, especially being the first game of the year. They only play four true road games this year. Uh, yes. And the first, you know, they have this, Purdue, Georgia Tech, and USC, uh, the last game of the year. Everything else is in South Bend. Or, you know, Yankee Stadium, MetLife. Uh, they're playing all over the world, uh, but that's not a true road game. It's a big year, uh, and I, if you don't make it, Joe, I'd chop them. Uh, and I'd say that as a Notre Dame fan. If, if Freeman can't get it done this year, I, yeah. I'd send him out. And, that, and it doesn't have to be uh, this first yep. game. Uh, and here is Freeman's numbers, Joe, uh, for you. 4-1-1 one one ATS as an underdog, which, of course, he is uh, going into this one. Uh, listen, I, I think 
it's nice to have another experienced quarterback that you bring in in Riley Leonard. But Riley Leonard isn't half the passer Sam Hartman is. Uh, and I do think they take a step back offensively. And I don't consider him to be an offensive-minded guru or a quarterback guy. So I don't know how he's going to elevate Riley Leonard here uh, or the coaching staff is going to elevate here. I, I I think they take a step back offensively, but Notre Dame's defense, that defensive front, the line, they are going to be ferocious here. So to me, I, I, it's a coin flip game. I think uh, they got the edge at home, A&M. But I don't see this thing getting in the mid forties at all. I mean, this is twenty one fourteen kind of thing. Yeah. They're hanging their hat, Joe, that they brought this Denbrook back. This Mike Denbrook is the offensive coordinator who was there with Kelly. Yeah. Uh, year, went with Kelly to LSU two years ago, and now yeah. has come back to South Bend. Uh, and look, it's only got to be better because I thought last year, I think I might have said this to you yesterday, they didn't let Hartman do. What he, was, what he was suited to do. They real they really mm. tied Hartman into their art running game, and they're out like that kid. He could throw the football, and they didn't let him do it. Yep. So maybe it'll be more suited for Riley Leonard since he's not as good a thrower as Sam Hartman. But I'm going to be scratching my head, Joe. This is a a good young quarterback that once again they bring yep. in as a transfer. Use him. Let him do something out on the field. This is the typical uh, Lisi thing. Why, why win forty to twenty when you can lose thirteen ten? You know, type of deal uh, that oh. we talk about all the yep. time. So, let, you you got you got superior athletes. Uh, run some good offense uh, and actually try to score some points uh, if you're the Irish. All right, Joe. We got a lot of other games here. Uh, by the way, I think the Irish are going to win, Joe. <laughs> and they might I very well. I still don't. No, I think it's first one to twenty one wins. I really do. I think it's first one to twenty one wins. 20, 23-20 Irish. Uh, let's keep it there. That might be a little too close for you for the under, but 23-20 mm -hmm. Irish uh, Saturday night at Kyle Field. All right, we got lots of games. Let's do try to fit one in here, and then we'll do the rest. Actually, we'll do the rest after I talk to Keith, because Keith Stewart's down uh, at East Lake for the Tour Championship. We'll get a quick update with him, and then we will finish these off. Uh, first slate, Joe, some of the early games. Virginia Tech visiting Vandy uh, early kick on Saturday. UConn going to Maryland chattanooga into tennessee uh to get slaughtered south dakota state at oklahoma state you know gundy sometimes has trouble in those first games joe uh against some lesser competition i feel like they've had some struggles in stillwater over the years and akron getting 48 and a hook in columbus at the shoe against ohio state anything you like there yeah, uh, I'm with you on Oklahoma State. Uh, those games tend to be a little bit uh, scary there uh, with teams like South Dakota State with nothing to lose, right? But, you know, when you have a 40-year-old quarterback like Bowman uh, and the number one <laughs> running back in the country, you can you can weather that storm. Stillwater <laughs> will be uh, will be rocking here, and I do think it's uh, it'll be too much Oklahoma State. Uh, I... <laughs> Me and you, I love it. The forty-year-old quarterbacks uh, that these teams have. Uh, I, I actually think I, I'm not going to probably personally do it, Joe. But I, I think Ohio State can cover the fifty or a forty-eight and a half or forty-nine and a half. If they want to, they could do it, Joe. It's a matter of if Correct. they want to, and I feel like Ryan Day wants to flex. And he might flex tomorrow uh, in that situation. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid.
There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. We have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. And we are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Friday. Carver High in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have you with us. I was very upset this week because I missed Golf Wednesday. Uh, and I always love talking to Keith Stewart from Read the Line as we get ready for this week's PGA Tour event. The good news is Keith's nice enough, while he's still there at Eastlake at the Tour Championship, to jump on on a Friday and get us ready for the weekend. I'm not sure how much is going to be at stake in terms of the actual <laughs> tournament at this point. But... We do have Scheffler at 20 under, uh, six up on Xander Schauffele, and he's about to putt for par here on 13. Keith Stewart from Read the Line. Hi, Keith. I missed you. How are you? Mike Carver, it's great to be with you here on a Friday afternoon. And um, hit me. What are we talking about today? College football? Because this thing's over from a FedEx hey, Cup point of view. You, you, know? you could go to the Clemson-Georgia game tomorrow if you want. Instead of going there, you can go over to the Mercedes and see, uh, and see a great college football game because I don't know what you're going to have left here. Now, we'll always find something. Uh, oh, yesterday, yeah. me and Cam threw the top five on Bermuda Burns in there. You know, we're, we'll always find a little something to get, get us through the weekend. But in terms of this 72 holes with the strokes, which I don't like, Keith. I know I didn't talk to you Wednesday. They got to be another way. I don't have the answer, yep. but there's got to be another way to, to, to crown this FedEx Cup champion. Uh, you know what, Mike? It, it's pretty simple. You just run the tournament like every other tournament. There's no other playoff system where, you know, the football game, the guy, you know, because I don't know, because you won your division, you get a seven point lead because you're Pat Mahomes. I mean, the stuff, it just doesn't make any sense. And, you know, they're just trying to deal with these guys who complain about the fact that, oh, I played great all year. All right. So then jack up that Comcast top 10 purse that they get after the Wyndham and then pay the guys more money there. But if the playoffs are like this, every other playoffs, it's it's basically an elimination. So let's eliminate people. I, I don't understand all this. It all goes back to 2018. The famous Tiger walking down 18, you know, where he looked like the Pied Piper with all the fans coming behind him. Nobody knows that Justin Rose won the FedEx Cup that year, right? Because Tiger won the Tour Championship. And, and that really kind of was the tipping point that they were like, well, we need to make it so that whoever wins this wins the FedEx Cup trophy. Well, it's not a regular season contest. There's just too much going on. If you want to make this thing, you know, I, I've talked to a bunch of people this week. I said, give me 32 people. We'll play match play, 32-16, 8, and then 4-2 and two on Sunday. But instead of match play, we'll play stroke play. You play 18 holes, head-to-head, -head, you know, and the low score moves on. You know, instead of going hole by hole like you would in the Ryder Cup or President's Cup or something like that. I mean, there are ways to do this, Mike. But what they're doing right now is is the worst of all worlds. You know, Scotty goes out, and, and, and they don't even really kind of get it. You know, the tour doesn't even know how to market themselves properly because – after yesterday, they said he, he had the largest lead ever in PGA Tour history after 18 holes. It was seven. Well, he started with a two-shot lead over Xander, 
And not only that, but it was really a one-shot lead because Colin and a bunch of other guys shot five under and Scotty shot six. It's just out of it. creates so much confusion amongst real golf fans that we have here on Sports Grid that you and I, we talk to every week. I don't get it. I'm with you. I, I think that's the biggest thing, Keith, is obviously we've done this all year. We've had a great thing with Golf Wednesdays. We've had a lot of winners, yeah. all of us, me, you, Cam. We've done a great job. And I think even the people that have gotten into it with us, you know, they'll look at a week like this, and, and I got some some hits on social media about it. Like, what am I what am I looking what at I here doing? this week? Because there's a market yeah. with the strokes. There's a market without the strokes. Now we've got markets without Scotty in the strokes, with Scotty in the strokes. Like, it's confusing, Keith, from a betting perspective, to get involved with this tournament uh, this week with only 30 golfers in it. It shouldn't be. And I think that that's what makes it toughest. So let's talk about what we can do here. Scheffler's okay. minus 300 with the strokes. He just dropped one. He's 19 under, and Xander just birdied to get to 15. So it's back to four, uh, and Xander's plus 400 live right now. The 72-hole stroke play, which is without yeah. the starting strokes, Scheffler's plus 175, Morikawa plus 340, Xander plus 650. I'm guessing, Keith, that's more of the market where you'd like to look at over the next two days. 100%. And, and I think that the guys that you want to favor are actually really live in that market, right? You've got Tony Finau. He's at nine under after two days. Colin Morikawa, nine under after two days. Xander, seven under. Wyndham Clark is in there. And, and you look at some of these guys like, like a Finau, right? I mean, his ball striking has been really, really good, and the putter has kind of kicked in. We've been talking about him a lot in the playoffs. He'd be a good play over the weekend to continue doing what he's doing. He's a perfect fit for this place. He's long. He's straight. And if the putter is somewhat good, then he's got an advantage here down on the Bermuda grass. And, you know, this thing's far from done, especially in the 72 all stroke play tournament. You know, Scotty now with the bogey there, he's tied with these guys at nine under par. So there's a lot to play out. Now, I know this is where this is where it kind of stinks is that it's tough to find that leaderboard. You got to do the math on your own because you have to know where they started. And then yet. But hey, here's the thing. You can also follow follow the odds. If you follow the odds on the books that are running the stroke play tournament, you could see who's really making moves and you could adjust accordingly. I mean, Adam Scott, I'm not going to mention his name, right, after what happened last week with the putter, but he's first in putting this week and he's second off the tee. Here's another guy, right? Scotty is what? He's eight under or nine under. I, you know, yeah. I looked at the board right before I came on with you, so I'm not 100% sure where he's, but he sits right there. He's right in the mix. And of course, Bermuda Burns, I still feel really good about this guy. I walked the front nine and almost passed out today with Wyndham Clark and Sam Burns. I walked all 18 holes with Sam Burns yesterday. He is hitting the ball beautifully. You just can't make every putt on these greens. They're brand new. They, like, they did this renovation so quickly, they should have taken a year off. I understand why they come here. Atlanta, Coca-Cola, everything, the money. But, you know, man, they should they should have just moved over somewhere. The greens are really, really fresh and just grown in. A lot of green in that Bermuda grass. Uh, Adam Scott plus 850 with the 72 yep. hole stroke play right now. And Bermuda Burns actually went down to 37 to 1 for that uh, right now. Finau is actually still a good price, 34 to 1 uh, on the 72 hole stroke play yep. as well. Uh, Keith, uh, I'm going to miss you. We don't have golf uh, the next couple weeks, but Napa's around oh, yeah. the corner. Napa's, Napa's around the corner. Uh, yep. And then the President's Cup right after that. Golf ain't going away, guys. We've had a fun Golf Wednesday. The regular yeah. season and the playoff might be over, but Golf Wednesdays will not be when we get to Napa. I know they changed the name. I don't know off the top of my head. Swing season will start uh, in a few weeks. Keith, tremendous job. Keith Stewart, read the line with us on Coast to Coast. We're back after this. Gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR distance zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. 
there is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt. You never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. And we are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Friday, a big college football Friday. Carver High and Joe Ranieri in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. We've been talking tons of college football today. All year on Fridays, we have had the college football update from our man Rich Sermonell. So, of course, on the first big weekend of college football, we got to get Rich in the mix. Let's go. Hey, Mike, great to have college football back. Going to take a look back briefly at week zero. My big takeaway, Florida State, Georgia Tech down in Dublin. Uh, not the same Florida State team as 2023. That's obvious. But the biggest takeaway is what it means to the ACC. This conference, which we thought would have parity, now is wide open. So if you're Miami, if you're NC State, Virginia Tech, Clemson, heck, Georgia Tech at this point, you're looking at this conference and saying, we've got a legitimate shot to not only win a title, but also get to the college football playoff. Remember, this year we moved to 12 teams, top four conference winners, automatic bid, automatic buy. So a lot of these schools that haven't tasted championship in the ACC now have a shot as Florida State looks to regroup. Now, I'm going to move ahead to top storylines, week one in college football. It's an odd slate of games, Mike. We have a lot of FBS, FCS games that we'll see a lot of blowouts, but mixed in that flotsam and jetsam are some really good games. Storyline number one, let's go to Gainesville. Miami versus Florida, in-state rivals. This, for me, is all about the coaching matchup. Mario Cristobal, Billy Napier, these are two guys who begin their third season on the job, firmly on the hot seat. The fallout for the losing coach in this game is going to be epic. You've got a shot for the winner to now say, hey, we might have a shot to be the toast of the town in the Sunshine State, especially after Florida State's loss. Huge game uh, Saturday afternoon for these two schools. Now, storyline number two, I love the quarterback matchup down at Kyle Field between Notre Dame and Texas A&M. ND gets to watch its debut of Riley Leonard. Texas A&M has Connor Wegman, who I think has a shot to really soar up draft boards next April. Both of these guys finished last season uh, on the injured reserve injury. So we don't know what to expect from these guys. They're facing two terrific, terrific defenses. That scene at Kyle Field is going to be electric. And finally, storyline story number three, Sunday night, prime time, USC, LSU, Allegiant, Las Vegas, going to be a great game. I want to see if this USC defense really has turned a corner. 34 points per game allowed last year. All of the talk in the offseason is about this unit being more physical, 
They did a great job of bringing DeAnton Lynn, the defensive coordinator, over from UCLA. But now it's time to prove it against Garrett Nussmeyer, Kyron Lacey, the breakout wide receiver. If USC is going to compete in the Big Ten, they have got to be better defensively. Uh, They certainly do, Rich. Uh, They have to be better defensively. Me and Joe are going to get that game uh, very soon, uh, the Sunday night game between USC and LSU. Of course, LSU has lost uh, the last couple years in those big uh, week one matchups and neutral sites against Florida State. Uh, They'll try to change that in Vegas uh, coming up here. All right, Joe, let me squeeze one more uh, of Saturday's games in, and then we'll finish them on the other side at the top. Uh, Colorado State visiting Texas. Of course, lots of expectations with this Texas team, that is a very, very heavy number uh, that you're going to have with the Longhorns here, 32 and a hook. Miami of Ohio and our friend Chuck Martin visiting Northwestern Saturday afternoon. That's at three and a half now. Old Dominion at South Carolina, minus 20 and a half for Beamer. UNLV, I actually like UNLV, Joe, in Houston, uh, taking on the Cougs, getting the three and a half. I thought the UNLV team was very spunky last year. And Michigan. 20 and a half uh, coming back a very different team after winning the national championship with Fresno state at the big house. Yeah. I have no idea what to expect from Michigan though this year. Do you have any idea what we're going to get from them? Uh, It's a lot of turnover. That's a, that's a lot of new faces, new moving parts uh, under the microscope. I, that's a tough one for me here and Fresno state, they could be spunky enough to stay within that number. Uh, I'm with you uh, on that. I I think that that's – it's kind of like a no play for me, Joe, really, because Mm. there is too many unknowns uh, that are involved. Coach, quarterback, offensive line, defense. There's a lot of things uh, that have changed. That being said, uh, they'll probably smash them uh, now that we said all of that. We're back. Hour number three, coast to coast, right after this. Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bayern of the Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, he did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this mother thing all the way to the top now. 